This is the December 2023 meeting of the Centro West Board of Directors. Uh, agenda, ongoing discussions. Okay, um, while going through our mission statement for something else, there was a section where we were saying Centos instead of the Centro West project. Being that the board had voted on the mission statement, um, I wanted to bring it back to the board. We do have quorum, so we can make that correction to the wording. Um, it's really just for clarification to avoid any confusion because some people call CentOS Linux CentOS, some people call CentOS Stream CentOS, and we are talking about the project itself in the mission statement. So would someone, does anyone have any discussion on this first off? Just to be a little official, does someone want to make a motion and we'll second it and do a vote? I motion. I move. I'll second. Very good. All those in favor of making those slight changes in two places from CentOS to CentOS Project say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Any anybody abstaining? Are you raising your hands to a vote? In favor, do you have something to say, Mike? No, sorry, I was okay. hitting the wrong button. And <laughs> No problem. All right, we will make those changes in two places. Another reason why this is important, if um, people have seen, and I don't know if everyone has seen it, Sean had made a really detailed um, issue to the CentOS section of the, I think the CentOS.org section of GitHub, GitLab, um, just outlining some the up the parts that we want to do in the update to the website um, and putting the mission statement up there is one of those things. And also moving into our next item, I would like the success stock to be up there. We are still missing metrics though. Who is the best person to get us metrics? Because we can't say I'm improving for two new contributors is a good metric to measure against if we have five people contributing now. You know, so we need to know what numbers we're at before we can determine the numbers to go in the success doc and make it official. Sean, Bex, Josh is in here. Yeah, and my inkling would be to ask Josh or Brian, but they are not present. Okay. And they could be off for the holidays. Um, which makes me remember Josh, Celeste, and Johnny are not here. Okay. Um, all right. I will bring that up to them. I, In my recent assigning of all the um, unassigned board issues, I had assigned that one to myself. So I will follow up on that. Um, Next, I have the SIG reviews having gone through all those board tickets to make sure they were assigned. I think we before we can discuss the SIG reviews, we need to skip down to issue number 122, document offboarding retirement process for CentOS SIGs. Um, Pat, you had worked on that. Yes, I think that's in good shape. Yeah, it, we left it a month ago. It looks good to me. Let's see what other things others think. No one has commented. Anyone want to comment for or against any changes you want? Otherwise, we're going to close this and make that our official. Yeah, uh, we'll need to make sure it gets transferred into our SIG docs so that the SIGs are aware that that's our process and so we can find it again. Yeah. Uh, correct comment for this. Approved by the board. It needs to go in the docs. And I think just for the reminder for the SIG docs, I will leave this open. Okay. Now we can skip back up to the inactive SIGs. Um, and I think I got them all. Sean, let me know if I missed anybody. Um, there were four SIGs that had 
met the inactive status. Um, the feature request, the public CI alternative architectures and config management. Um, there's been no activity on them. They did not respond to Sean in their tickets. And the last comments we had were to bring them back to the board for a decision. Now that we have a process, we can go ahead and begin that process should we choose to declare these inactive. We can go through them individually if we need to. Um, what is everyone's feeling about feature request? Do we want to begin the um, retirement process on it? I feel like this one never really started. At least I don't remember anything besides the initial conversation we had about it, anything coming out of it. Okay. Anyone opposed to it being retired? Just clarification, is to say retiring right now or I begin the process of reaching out to them? I think we should begin the process. Yeah, I agree. That's why I wanted to do the process approval first before I came back to these. Okay. And Josh, bring that you got here, I'm gonna come back around to something for you. Yeah, I apologize for being late um, no on this one. I think I was even the board sponsor for this SIG and I agree, we should definitely start the process. All right, public CI. Anyone know any backstory of that? Anyone have any objections to the process being begun? I think that it's been superseded by the CentOS integration SIG. Okay. And yeah, that's my feeling as well. I, I don't think anyone knows that the SIG exists. So I, that, I think starting that process to wind it down is probably fair. My, my memory says that it was a, a pre-stream initiative and that during the stream process, things got a little more complex because new options became available and new paths became part of the process. But my memory has been faulty in the past and it will be faulty in the future. <laughs> That's all right. All right, alternative architectures. All the members left okay. after the stream thing started, so it that was the arm. Uh, that was the arm thirty two port, right? That was the well, yeah. So what yeah. was left was the arm thirty two port. Um, it used to also, I think, be where the power PC stuff was going on and other things. Um, but when stream started and Red Hat took over all of the ports for the core distribution, um, uh, what was left wasn't much, and the members quit. So the, the SIG is effectively defunct. Okay. So we will, we, we'll still go through the process on it. Yep. Um, this is one where I got to wonder if um, anybody would want to take over or if it, or if we just need to let it, let it go away. Is, there was some interest about re reviving it to handle a risk five port. Um, but the challenge here is that so far, um, the initial request for having space to put infrastructure up for it has not been responded to. So I don't know if those people who were interested in it are still around or anything because their initial request kind of went un unresponded. If if there is interest in doing the risk five stuff, um, could that work just happen under the under the new ISA SIG? Would that be an acceptable place for them? I, I feel like it's slightly different, but I don't yeah. know. I mean, generally, the the thing the usually these ports are essentially standing up a dedicated Koji that shadows the main instance and tracks it to build stuff. Yeah. So, um, whether that is the approach that gets used for this or not, I don't know. But my my recollection is the initial ask for consideration for resources, not even asking for resources, just went unresponded. So, like, you know, the people that are interested in it, maybe it's worth reaching out to them again and saying, "Hey, if 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 we can get the things in place for you to do this, 
do you still want to do it before actually winding down the SIG entirely? I would first make sure that we can get the space. I mean, it, we don't want to ask them to come back if we're not going to respond to them again. Um, and then next is Lance and then Jeffro. That's in order. I was just going to mention that I am interested in a Risk V port um, as I'm starting to support some hardware with that. And I would prefer to have some kind of rail derivative to run it on. Right now, I'm doing it on Debian because they're getting close to stabilizing it. So I have my hand up for that. Okay, <laughs> not, not, I, not that I have the, the, the time to actually do it, but, <laughs> but I am interested. I just wanted to throw out that the, there is a very strong interest within Fedora to support RISC-V. Uh, there is a Fedora RISC-V, for lack of a better term, it's a SIG. It's not a completely formed and there aren't meetings yet, but there will be hopefully in the first part of the year. So, um, I'm certainly so interested in that as well, Jeffro. Cool. Because I'm, I'm, I'm using one of those unofficial ones that it's kind of weird how it's set up. <laughs> there are actually two different efforts within Fedora on this. Uh, one is from Red Hat and one is from uh, outside from a company called Redos. All right, Josh, Sean, and then Thomas. Yeah, I, I actually, Jeffro and Lance both uh, answered, they answered my question and made the same suggestion. I just feel like, um, particularly on this architecture, if we refocus and kind of peer with our, our sister project in Fedora, it actually would accelerate things for us in the end. And so like, that's where I would direct risk five interest right now, not not on our own side. Yep, I agree. Sean? <laughs> uh, you're muted, Sean. I, I push the stop having my hand up button and it. I feel like there should be one button hand down and on mute. Um, the process is I contact the SIGs to see if there's still interest. And I just checked the uh, the FAST group on this. And if I were to email SIG Altarch, uh, it would not reach the at least the two people in here that have just expressed interest in risk five. So I want to um, uh, be sure that if I'm reaching out and seeing if people are interested, that it's reaching the right people and maybe these aliases aren't hitting it do we also maybe need to add in as part of the procedure and we can go around and add this and then revote on it if needed just also sending it to the dev list and uh, that is also? in the process is it oh well not to be yeah, that's in the process it. already so Excellent. we don't need to do that again <laughs> <laughs> okay so just it's part of the process Sean. Yeah. So if you mail out sent to us and dev list i'm sure jeffro and lance will respond to you okay very good um, yeah i just wanted to add that maybe it's worth waiting for them to take a decision where we will see a lot of people and maybe interest will uh rise especially if we have a two-day discussion maybe we'll find new contributor because risk five is really uh popping everywhere in every discussion so Maybe it's a bit early, but uh, if the process is contacting everybody to see if there's interest uh, at the beginning, we should start it anyway. Maybe. So here's an idea, being that we have those meeting rooms on Thursday. Maybe, Jeffrey, I know you're not going to be there. Lance, are you going to be at Connect? I will not, probably. Okay. It might be worth um, putting something out, saying it. We're thinking about reviving this if there's interest and giving them a time in a room for people to show up, knowing that Lance and Jeffrey aren't going to be there, but seeing if there's any more interest. If there is interest, if we can find someone from Fedora wanting to to give a bit of state of RISC-5, I can try to gather a few slides on my side on why RISC-5 is interesting and propose something for, for, for Connect. And Sean just put something about a short presentation, so that's perfect. David, okay, I can work on something. Mute. Sorry. Um, we covered this already. I was going to suggest, as part of the unwinding, emailing the SIG and asking the people there if they're OK with somebody else taking it over, and only after reaching out to the list, because uh, I I don't want to create the impression that if somebody is interested in keeping doing the work and I just had stuff going on, that we want to like steal it from them or something. Um, that was my only comment there. But besides that, I'm I'm all in favor of what we discussed. 
Yeah, I think we need to hit all the places, you know, first, you know, definitely to the people in the SIG and saying, are you still active? Are you willing to revive the group? And also sending it out to listen, and saying, hey, this we're looking at, you know, retiring this SIG because of activity. If anyone's interested in participating in it, please let us know and we can get them set up. Yep. All right. Is there any more discussion? Oh, nice, Lance. Um, I'll actually read that for, for the recording. For what it's worth, I'm a member of the Risk Five Foundation and in the CI Lab SIG that should be starting up next year. If anything, I can provide some hosting space for it. If that's an issue, I'm already doing that with Debian. That's awesome. So that's perfect. Yeah, yeah that's great. Thank you, Lance. So at least that issue, which stopped the group in the first place, can now be worked around. You need porter boxes for Fedora folks. I don't even know what a porter box is. Um, config management. I'm assuming we're done with and happy with the discussion on alternative architectures before I go on. Okay, config management. That was the last one I had as being. I don't think there was much activity since stream either. So, yeah, I believe can... a lot of their goal was try and get good, stable Puppet and Ansible packages. And now that Ansible ships with the OS and Puppet Labs has their own RPM repos, and Puppet is also packaged in Fedora and Ansible is packaged in Fedora. I think that they may have met their goal. Okay. Just to clarify the recording, um, Ansible within the context of the OS is very limited support, but Apple does provide a much broader Ansible offering. All right, so being that Ansible is available in Apple, and Puppet is available from them. Is there any objection to us beginning the process to retire config management? All right, we will begin the process for config management. Um, like I said, I believe I got all the ones that we had the question of them being ready for retirement. Um, I'm glad to see that we may be able to restart alternative architectures as risk five. Um, Josh, being that you're here, I want to go back to the CentOS success doc. Are you the person who can get us metrics? Uh, remind me on which parts. Um, how, how long it takes for someone to get a response. Um, how many people are contributing that are non Red Hatters? Um, that would probably be uh, not me. It would probably be Brian Stinson or um, Adam, Adam Shumalink on okay. the Central stream team. I do know that the last time they looked at this, getting the data out of GitLab, particularly in the way that we have it plumbed, is not as simple as what we're asking for. So, um, I know that they were working with GitLab to try to make it simpler, but I don't know where they're at with that. Okay, Sean? Uh, we have a, a, a data science, science team in the open source program office that's doing some of this kind of, I don't know how easily they can, they can do this, but I know that they've been doing a lot of work on being able to answer certain questions. Um, uh, the, Contributions by non Red Hatters um, is always a tricky one because it yeah, because people use different emails. I know for most open source projects, except for this one, when we joined the two um, auth systems, I usually use my home address. Yeah, um, the average time, response time to a new issue seems to me like something that's straightforward if you've got the system in place to do it. Um, but uh, the the one thing I would point out though is like. When we started this conversation, uh, the center of the universe was still Bugzilla. 
And since then, yeah. it's all transitioned to JIRA. And so the data itself is going to be heavily skewed by the migration that went under, that we, yeah. that we just went under. OK. Um, it, it might be it might be advantageous to figure out if there are better ways to measure what we actually want to measure. Because uh, like response time to bugs is is going to vary widely between the teams. Um, and I know we can average it out and like look at the average, but like taking the measure and then doing anything actionable with it, you're immediately going to have to dive into like, well, which team is causing it to go down or which team is, you know, the best performers. And that's not necessarily something that we have any influence over. Right. So I, I just, I'm not saying that it's bad to have metrics. I'm saying we might want to, we might want to just take a step back and look at what we're trying to measure and what we're going to do with the measurements that we're going to agree on. So it might be interesting, Sean, for us to meet with Callie. And then once we kind of know a little better on what we want and why, then we'll bring in Brian and Adam and, and talk how we can get the data. Okay, that sounds like a working plan. I mean, I, I, I unfortunately don't have the doc open right now. Neither do I. I thought we had a metric that was a good example, uh, in my opinion, which was along the lines of like, what does our um, active SIG participation look like? And do we have growth in the number of SIGs, right? Like that would be an interesting uh, metric to me from a board perspective, but it, it clearly can't be the only metric we have. No. And it's something we want to be measurable enough that we can see improvement or see, get a warning that we need to improve and then work on how to improve it. Um, yeah. And I think the doc itself was well, written and well edited by everyone and I wish I could find it as well. Um, but um, Sean had a really good idea of us meeting with the data science folks like Callie. So we'll start there. If not before Chris, the holidays, we'll do it in January because I don't know when she's starting. I don't mind joining while I'm out. Um, okay. Any other discussions on the success stock or retiring the SIGs before we move into the issues? Okie dokie. These are our random group of issues that I pulled out. 124 was pretty new. Um, Thomas, I think it's actually yours, as in you put it in. Yeah, so, so this is something that we discussed with Bex, and I think we should close it for the board because there's not much to be done at the board level. So we should just follow up um, um, because it's true that it's not an action really on the board anymore. Okay. Uh, so uh, Brian is not here, right? So I don't think we have an update or does someone has an update on this subject in terms of uh, a legal issue about the kernel sources okay. being bloody through or? The, the ticket's a bit sparse. What was the uh, sort of final thoughts on that? Like, can we get the source there? This is ticket 124? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's, That's basically two sentences. Here, I'll put it in the chat. Actually, we're the... running this one down. Yes, I'm trying to swap that back into my brain so I can correctly answer it. Just one moment. I'm, I'm reviewing the ticket like everybody else frantically in another window. Um, but since you all all clicked the ticket first, it's loading slow for me. So I blame you for this. Sorry. Uh, one second. Apparently, I also am not logged in, which was unexpected. Yeah, it, it, it was all the Tamot SIG uh, request about the kernel source and redistribution. And we just decided to, to create a ticket, but it's true that we don't have much to, it was to track the work, but it's not really something that we can fix at the board meeting, so. So, uh, our password manager has decided that I'm not allowed to log in the system. So mm -hmm. I apologize for the delay. My recollection without having read the ticket is, we have provided instructions on how the CentOS SIG that builds K mods can proceed forward with building K mods against the rel kernel. 
My understanding from Brian Stenson is that there's going to be some delivery kind of engineering. I'm not qualified to tell you what it is that will need to be made available to that group, but they have been made whole with a process to move forward. Since I'm not Brian, I don't know where that is. I'm a different Brian, um, but I handed that off to the better Brian, Mr. Stenson. Can we get some version of that typed up in the ticket? I'm happy to do so. Um, what I would like to do is to bounce any text that I would type into this ticket past Brian Stinson because I don't want to accidentally implicate a specific solution being done because I don't want to tie his hands on how he implements, but I want to make it clear that he's got the ball. Now, he may not, and I made this clear when I wrote the Colonel Sig folks uh, themselves, the Kmod Sigs, that Brian may be just the messenger. He may not be the implementer. He may not be the final person who does the work. Um, I'm trying to watch Josh's little box here to make sure that I'm not stepping across the line. Um, but I'm not trying to like say that Brian Stinson is going to personally go make this happen as much as he should know how it will occur and ultimately be able to describe it or to hand it off to the next human. Okay, and reading from Peter in the chat for the log, the KMOD SIG will continue building for stream. Being able to produce artifacts for RHEL depends on this issue. Um, and Peter, can you confirm in the chat that you got my email that said what I just rambled off? Because I'm hoping you did. As I recall, I didn't get a response from you, so I want to make sure that you did receive it. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Because then I yes. might respond as well. Uh, yes, I got your message. I think I also replied to you and the other Brian. Um, and I'm currently, in the, like you said, waiting for Brian to tell me who is responsible, who's going to implement the technical side. So I can confirm all that. I am aware, or the KMOD SIG is aware, that we have to wait for the implementation. We know how how we'll be able in the future to produce KMOS for REL, but it's not implemented yet. So as far as I understood it, it's just a matter of time, but there will be a solution. Okay. I'm going to reassign this to Brian because I'm trying to be better about us having the right people assigned to things. To be clear, that is Mr. Stinson. Yes, Mr. Stinson. <laughs> I wish to avoid like in a matrix move being Brian at Red Hat as much as possible. Um, all Brian's are the better Brian. That, that's why we call you Bex. Um, but also because I am literally incapable, probably from a skill level, but definitely from an access level of providing the technical of this solution. And maybe the technical side is better track somewhere else so we can get a ticket somewhere else. Yeah. Was the point if uh, it's really technical implementation, uh, there's not much we can do at the SIG level, at the board level, sorry. So let's see what Brian says and we'll track, uh, we continue to track that. I'm going to finish typing this and I'll read it back to everybody before I hit comment. Okay, so I took part of Pete, Peter's um, statement from the chat. The KMOD SIG will continue building for stream. Being able to produce artifacts for RHEL depends on this issue. And they are working with B. Stenson. For technical resolution, ticket has been reassigned to Brian for visibility. Is everyone good with that? Okay, I'm going to hit comment. Alrighty, our next randomly chosen is number 90 guidelines for what key, I'm going to say it right, even though everyone calls it quiet, usage for sent, sent to a SIG. Um, Davida, last time I looked at it, you and Neil had said that you had a process 
Um, it's a sign to me. The, it's a sign to you now. The the basic gist of the the direction here is you're more than welcome to do what Hyperscaler did. Um, our guidelines are just don't represent your container images as direct CentOS uh, proper container images and make sure that they're highlighted as a, a SIG artifact. Um, I haven't written it down yet because I actually have to talk to Bex about this and we haven't had the opportunity yet. Okay. Just make sure there's no uh, nothing running afoul on trademark or anything like that. Yeah, yeah. and on the Hyperscale side, we're happy to adjust if it turns out what we're doing is not exactly on point. Uh, we try to make it clear these aren't official and they're in their own account of way. Yeah. So hopefully there's no confusion there. Uh, the other thing we could do if we wanted to, we could make like a CentOS test six or a CentOS community or whatever Quay bucket and encourage six to publish there. That's another option. Uh, but given that we were the only ones doing this, it seemed silly at the time. Yeah, I I um I really don't want to overcomplicate this. Uh, it, it's just basically a naming convention, and I think we can probably get it closed out as soon as Bex and I have a brief conversation. Okay. Yep. Sounds I will good. leave this without a comment and in your hands. And then Brian Stinson is in here because I've also included our very favorite number 67, trusting the SIGs by default from a CentOS project perspective. It seemed like we were really close to getting this closed out. Yeah, last I knew they were doing some fiddly governance things so that Microsoft would say that the key was trustworthyable. Yes, my understanding is this is pending on formalizing a government structure that we we can then show Microsoft that we're doing what we're supposed to do and then going through with it. Uh, I think at one point that was tied to the technical committee conversation we had. Um, okay. But my understanding from the last time this came up was that we were going to figure out to do that independently, but I haven't heard from Brian since, so I don't know. Okay, I, and then I assigned this to Brian yesterday because yeah, it was one of the unassigned ones. I briefly talked to Brian about this yesterday. Um, oh, sweet. <laughs> it, I'll say the technical committee that we tried to form was part of it, of course. That got, I don't want to say, uh, we'll just say the technical steering committee idea needs to be revisited right uh, it's not dead it's just need to be we need to figure out how to move that forward but i think we should decouple that from this mm -hmm. uh, there is a delay on the microsoft side as far as i know on the governance aspect of it and he's working with our internal team that does the signing uh, aspect for secure boot to help sort that out so okay Do we want to add a comment on this? Josh, do you want to put what you just said on this? We'll, we'll still leave it assigned to Brian. Yeah, I can, I'll type up something for the notes. Okay, perfect. All right, we already did number 122, so we can now close that officially. I will do that after this meeting. We had no new issues or issues on hold. So that brings us to you, Sean. Um, uh, your regular reminder that um, CentOS Connect is February 1st and 2nd in, um, in Brussels. So um, the CFP is open for five more days. So we've got space for, for meetups on Thursday morning and then presentations Friday afternoon or Thursday afternoon and all day Friday. Um, uh, if you're involved with SIGs, I'd really like to get um, updates from SIGs or reports on what kind of stuff you're doing or, you know, what's super cool. I like, uh, it's it's nice to like showcase all of our SIGs in there, um, but other work as well, non-SIG stuff, you know, cool stuff you're doing with CentOS, whatever. Um, any presentations are good. Um, and speaking of FOSDEM, um, we, oh, I want to know if there's interest in doing a board, um, a board and friends dinner. And I'll mention first, I'm, I'm also already, I'm talking to Justin about doing like a contributors dinner, uh, like a Fedora CentOS contributors dinner, like a big one, like we did last year. Um, so I guess that would be, I, I'm planning on a reception for CentOS Connect on Thursday evening. Um, and so then we would do a contributors dinner either Friday or Saturday, and that would leave 
Friday or Saturday for a, a smaller dinner if we wanted to do a board or board and friends. Um, that is up to you all. If you want one, I will organize it. I'm not sure who else is coming, how many people we'll have. Um, or possibly Sunday if people are staying for the enough people are staying for the dock stay on Monday. Uh, okay. So my next item was, are we doing something on Monday? Because I don't think we formalized that. I'm staying. I thought we, did. I thought we were, so I'm staying. Oh, yeah, I should book a meeting room for us then. So um, do we have people to do docs? Do we want to do an official doc SIG thing? Or there's, there's general website stuff that's not docs that we could work through too. Yeah, and, and we got a lot of work done last time on the wiki. So yeah. I thought there was definitely value in us sticking around on Monday and doing some work. Okay. Um, I guess I can take this asynchronously in terms of a, um, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll book a, a meeting room and advertise a, another web index day on Monday and we'll see who, who we get signed up for that. So that'd be cool. Uh, and I guess I'll just take it to the board to see uh, who's attending and is interested in dinner on 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 which nights? So, um, I think that will be it for uh, Fosdom. Uh, I will set up a um, a staffing grid at some point, and I will ping people about that, uh, both for Connect and as, as well as for the um, uh, the stand that we'll have at uh, at Fosdom. So, if people want to spend some time in a crowded hallway being elbowed by people. Um, we would really and, appreciate assistance. Don't make yeah. it sound so bad. <laughs> no, it's great, but it is, it's crowded, it's awesome. Um, especially on Sunday, Sunday is the distributions dev room. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm part of the organizing team on that. And so I'm gonna be pretty tied to that room for Sunday. So I won't really be able to be at the booth uh, very much for Sunday. So um, uh, I don't have the staffing grids up yet for either the booth or for Connect. I will get those up and I'll, I will email various places, including you all, for uh, to let you know. And also add the dev room in there. Oh yeah, we'll also set up a staffing grid for um, for the dev room. I have to talk to the rest of the dev room organizers about that. So um, I think that's everything for Fosdom. Fosdom there's a lot going on for Fosdom. Um, my other item was that uh, we've been approved to do a uh, basically a workshop at scale. Um, it'll be a, a few hours thing. We'll do like an intro to the CentOS project. What is stream? What are the six? How does it, you know, as a, a kind of a short presentation uh, and we'll follow it up with a workshop. And the one that I put in is, um, is to do a, a packaging workshop. Um, but we're free to kind of mix it up. And so um, if anybody wants to do a workshop on, you know, how to, how to do something cool with the stuff we're doing in our SIG, how to enable our packages and do some cool stuff with that. We can, you know, do that too. So if you have ideas on that, uh, let me know and we'll uh, we'll work it together. Um, and then uh, I think that's it. Uh, and the only other thing is I would like to request an executive session when we are finished with uh, public items. Okay. Okay. Um, do we have any SIG reports? I got one for Cloud. They're the team is going to be in Fosdom and uh, Connect. I'm so excited. I found out this morning. Excellent. So Cloud SIG will be in the house, and I believe they've already put in for a room on Thursday. Christian said he did. Um, so that's the big SIG report I have. Um, any other business? All right, then we will close out the public session. If anyone doesn't, if there, if no one has anything else they want to say, and we will move into Sean's executive session. Thank you, everyone, for attending. Um, and we will see everyone in January. I suspect office hours will be canceled um, because of PTO.